$1,500. But as you can tell by the tone of my voice, I wasn't best impressed. We, we would have to replace that. Before we can move on, shall I tell people what it is? We're driving the Pan American Highway from Alaska to Argentina in our camper van, Sophia. She's been our trusty steed now for the past four years and we have rarely had any mechanical problems. So I guess it was about time. Trying to iron out some brake issues hasn't been exactly straightforward. And when the people you trust mess it up, you have to take matters into your own hands. It's $300 for I don't know what the hell they did. Subscribe and join us for the ride with new videos every Sunday. It's ever so slightly, but I think... Oh. Guys, I'm not impressed with the Mercedes garage. If you've watched last week, you have seen that we unintentionally drove the Sonora Pass, which is the steepest pass in California. Brakes were just billowing out black smoke. We have never seen them that bad before, have we? No, we haven't, no, no. So we said we were gonna take it into Mercedes. We have done that. Good news is the brakes are fine. All four brakes, they said, perfectly fine. There's no warping, no scratching, nothing. They are all good. They also adjusted the handbrake for us, which if I'm being honest, I should have done myself because that was $300 just to adjust the parking brake. But when we'd done the pass and I was checking the brakes, I noticed that the outer tie rod, the boot, the rubber boot had split. So I needed to get that replaced. So I thought it's going to Mercedes. I'll just ask them if they can do that as well. Add it on. They came back and said that it was going to be $1,500 to replace let me get it, $1,500 to replace that. Now that just sits, connects to the wheel or to the, to the suspension mount. That, that's all I needed. This rubber bit here is what split. $1,500, this was $150. I asked, I said to them, nope, that's fine. Just supply me the parts. I got there, I sort of queried it. He said, yeah, it's, it's labor. And I said, it's just the outer tie rod. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were talking about the exact same thing. This takes half an hour, an hour to replace. They wanted five, six hours worth of labor to change this, which just takes the price, if I'm perfectly honest. Then they said the brake fluid needs uh, changing. They were gonna charge $350 for that. I said, nope, I could probably understand the brake fluid needs doing. I'll do that myself. And then a couple of other things which definitely don't need sorting, which I can do myself. Absolute crap. $1,500. And we're gonna do this this week, I think, if we've got the time. When I do do it, I know the alignment might slightly be out and we can take it to be realigned. Hello, buddy. But if I do it right, then it will just be out by a fraction, like the toe will be out slightly. Nothing too horrendous, but yeah. $1,500, but as you can tell by the tone of my voice, I wasn't best impressed. So, so not to mention, to check the brakes, to tighten the handbrake, and to supply this, what came to $750. This was $150. So it was $300 basically to check the brakes and $300 to, to adjust the handbrake. Guys, if there's one thing I've taken from this trip or uh, learned from this trip is to be as self-sufficient when it comes to the sort of the mechanical aspects of your vehicle. Like, okay, there are some things you're gonna have to take the, to the garage and get fixed, like you won't be able to do on the road. But 90, 85, 90% of the stuff you can do yourself. So we're gonna be doing it ourselves. If it goes wrong, okay, we'll hold our hands up and get somebody to do it, but yeah. Not a Mercedes garage. Not a Mercedes garage, that's for sure. So after that Mercedes fiasco, we escaped San Diego and we came out to the desert. We're currently about two hours east of San Diego, right near a place called Borrego Springs. It is absolutely beautiful here. It's probably one of the most like pristine areas of desert that we've been to, probably since like New Mexico. There's no glass anywhere. There's no shotgun cartridges. There's been no one doing shooting practice out in the desert, which happens all the time. No ATVs. It has been so relaxed, so peaceful here, but it is gonna hit 38 degrees today. 
we're, we're right in the heart of the desert. I think the summer temperatures here are like average 42 degrees. So we're not gonna be sticking around. We're gonna escape to the coast. We're still waiting on some parcels to be delivered before we can cross into Mexico. So we're on a bit of a waiting game at the minute. So our plan today is to head to the coast where it's about, what, 10 degrees cooler? 28 degrees. I 28 think. degrees rather than 38. We're gonna give this tie rod a go, change the brake fluid and get all of that stuff done. And then hopefully in the next couple of days, we're gonna be crossing into Mexico. But before we leave, I've gotta show you something really cool in the desert here. We've seen aliens in the desert. We've seen giant telescopes in the desert, but I've never seen these in the desert before. random are these? There are dinosaur statues in the middle of the desert. I think they're from an artist who's created like 150 different sculptures and they're all scattered around the desert here. There's a really famous one that's like a 350 foot serpent. But they're random dinosaurs. Like we had no idea they were here. We just were yeah. walking the docks and I was like, is that a dinosaur? There's a velociraptor in the bush. But there's loads of them. There's like little ones. There's these. these are the biggest ones we've seen. They're kind of out of like out of Mad Max sort of style, aren't they? It's very Mad Max style, yeah. And the landscape is as well. Yeah. But yeah, this is really cool. This whole desert, I think, is just so beautiful. I never really thought I was a desert person until we came to the no, States, I and agree. I love it. So it's where we've been, but I can't believe how hot it is. It's not even half nine yet, and it's like it's, over 30 degrees. Yeah. Guys, oh. it, is, it is that hot that this is all natural tan. I know. I never tan. Never. And ben and I, when we stand next to each other, we look like um, a zebra crossing. Because <laughs> Ben just too. looks at the sun in the winter and boom, he's like the colour of these dinosaurs. <laughs> Whereas I'm like transparent. <laughs> Guys, look at me, I'm sweating. I say it's like nine o'clock in the morning and it's roasting, but we're going to get out of here now because it's getting too hot. Yesterday we got to 35 degrees and all four of us were struggling. Our laptops were struggling, weren't they? We had to stop working at sort of one o'clock and couldn't start until five. It was yeah. that hot. So yeah, we're getting out of here now. Yep. It's roasting, yeah? Yeah. Let's go. With the sun beating down, we drove west towards the coast on a mission to hopefully sort out the van once and for all. Set part someone. Turn right, then your destination will be on the left. First up, Mercedes to get myself a few bits. Right, I've got the V5, I've got my shopping list. I got my card to pay. Um, G stock sprinter part. Uh, some. F and an R on it. I won't get them mixed up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, he's got a little handbag as well. $450 lighter. What? <laughs> yeah. Right. Whew. Why is it so much money? Um, because I bought rear, the no, front and rear pads. Three litres of the brake fluid and that was like so like thirty dollars each and oh an air filter because we didn't get the air filter oh, yeah. last time i'm gonna need to get a mortgage out before this trip is over <laughs> as we pulled up to our campsite ready to start work on the van we were met with another setback we were successfully checked into the campsite got to find our spot so you need to go all the way to the end and then wow turn, look how busy that is the rv right. bit yes. that is us one two three but well, it's a massive fell, it's slightly sloped, so I can't do the work here. No uh, no tie rod change this week, I don't think. So we booked two nights at a campsite for no reason. Booked two nights at a campsite for no reason. <laughs> cool, so after we went to the Mercedes, we popped to the grocery store to get some bits. And as I was walking the dogs around, this woman drove up and said, oh, excuse me, I hope you don't mind, but I've got these cookies. She's like, she said she shouldn't have bought them. She's had half of one and to throw that one away, but there's three other massive cookies in there and would we like them? I was like, yeah, of course we would. <laughs> of course bloody would. Ben was like, we've got free cookies. And I was like, what if they're like, oh my God, they're so heavy. What if they're so, laced with pencils or something? What if they're laced with like cyanide or something? Do you want to see? Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Oh, that was how, like a fried egg. I know, how cool are these? You know what, sometimes nothing goes to plan and sometimes you get free cookies. Mm. Such is life. Let us know if you would eat just some cookies given to you by a stranger in the grocery store car park. She was really nice, she was I'm... an older lady. And she said, I felt real guilty for buying them. I think she is on sort of, sort of diet, having like a cheat day sort of like thing, but right. I just can't believe she's bought these four giant cookies yeah. and then just gave them to us. Can I try it please? Yeah, go on then. 
Oh, you've picked the best one as well. It's like a birthday cake. Mmm. Mmm. nice? Mmm. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> okay. Oh well, free cookies. Not such a bad day. I like gourmet cookies as well. Mm. We booked here not just to escape the crazy heat of the desert, but also to get these last final jobs done on the van before we start our big drives down through Mexico. But it's obviously not going to happen today. What's hard is that we're still in limbo, so we should be in Mexico right now. But we're waiting on some parcels that have been delayed and we really need those parcels before we can move on. Shall I tell people what it is? Yeah, go on then. Okay. We're releasing some merchandise and it's our merchandise samples and we've been waiting for it for so long. They had a delay in printing. Which meant that there was a delay in getting the samples out to us and they should have been here by now, we should be on our way to Mexico. But yeah, we've been working really hard on our first line of merch. It's taken us quite a long time, but we um, are really, really excited to share it with you. We've kind of got a core collection of like our designs and we've also got like some limited edition designs which are going to be inspired by events and the trip itself um, and where we've been so far. So. Yeah, we really need those samples that we can see how the designs look, see if anything needs changing. So yeah, we, we can't go without them. So that is what we're waiting for. But for now, we're going to go and take the dogs for a little walk along the trails here, get some dinner on and probably sit down tonight and put our heads together and see what this next week looks like, seeing as we can't do half the jobs that we thought we would. Right, morning guys. We put our heads together last night and we've come up with a slight change of plan. We're going to move from the camp spot we're on and we're going to move just up the road to number 160 because it's flat and available for two days, which is great. So it gives us a chance to at least attempt to do the brake pad check and the ble brake bleed as well. I don't know if I'll have time to do the tie rod, but we shall see. Oh my word, chest is coming at me. Oh we no. also need to sort out this problem. I know, guys, we got Two a bit, bags of books. Yeah, we got a bit carried away. And over the past, I don't know, say four months, I've really got into reading. I've never been a big sort of, I say storybook, <laughs> novel, <laughs> novel fiction sort of reader, but I read one like gothic horror thriller and I'm hooked. Do you know what the best part is? Ever since we had this van, ever since we had the first van, what, four years ago, mm -hmm. I've been desperate to have a bookshelf. But Ben's been like, no, it's gonna add too much weight, gonna have too much stuff. And now that this one has started enjoying reading, guess what? We need a bookshelf, guys. A bookshelf. We need a bookshelf. <laughs> we kind of have to put ends on them. Yeah. So obviously with these, everything's just gonna fall off. Mm-hmm. That might work. That might work. Yeah. I mean, we can see most how of the books would sit in there. Yeah. And the ones that don't, we just don't put we in just there. Just don't put in there. Yeah. You for those? Yeah, I think that could. They're not too heavy, are they? No, they're nice and light. Okay, this is our new home for the next few days. Quite a lot flatter than the one we've just gone Much from. Flatter. So we're back from the shops. The bookshelf shopping was hopefully a success. And now it's on to the bigger, more serious jobs. We're going to check the brakes, check the brake pads, and change out our brake fluid. So we've got two bottle jacks. We've got our 3.5 ton one and a 12 ton one, which will go under as a backup and the two uh, jack stands. They are looking, they're looking fine, if I'm honest. I think what we'll do is just swap them out for the Mercedes ones and then we know if, the, if we still got the same like kind of vibration screech noise after then it's not the pads. Okay, this part of the caliper should be attached to this rubber bit like here that should be like that but then this one here this is the caliper, is a, this is the caliper yeah like the rubber it's come away from its boot I don't know if that is causing an issue, but I'm assuming we, we, we would have to replace that.
I just want to say how proud I am of Ben for giving this a go. He's not a mechanic, although he is very mechanically minded and is very good at this kind of stuff, but he's never done this before on the van and it's very nerve wracking working on something like brakes, especially when you think something might be wrong. Yeah, it just takes balls to do it. And I think it's helping us be more self-sufficient, understanding the van a lot better. So yeah, he's literally up to his elbows in grease and dirt right now. So yeah, give him a thumbs up. And when you watch this babe, we think you are awesome. Right, how is it driving? Right, driving successfully. There's no squeaks. There's no, that, that vibration from your side. But I couldn't really put it to the test because obviously the new pads need to let them bed in slowly. So we'll have to just drive around a few more times. But so far, so good. I'm gonna now do a lot of research. In fact, I'm gonna ask you guys, tell me what I should do. Or if you've got any tips or anything about the caliper issue. So one of the caliper pins isn't go, going out not the piston, the, the, the pins on the side. No matter what I did to grease it, lube it, it just it oh, wait, it wouldn't move. Yeah, it's completely seized. So I'm assuming I'm gonna to need to replace the caliper. So until I can double check and verify that, we're not gonna bleed the brakes because we'll have to do that anyway mm -hmm. when we do the caliper. So, brake changed. One thing I'm not pleased about is that Mercedes said they did a whole brake check and test and that has not seized today that was seized it must be seized for ages and they've never they've not checked that so it's 200 300 dollars for i don't know what the hell they did yeah i know not, i told you not impressive not impressed really pissed off with mercedes they're awful the brake pads have been changed now it's on to the fun job tested them with some of the books so they fit perfectly which is great i think that's gonna look nice yeah, I mean, fact, it just overhangs ever so slightly, but I think. Oh, chess. I think. Oh, chess. Well, that's <laughs> it. How I said to you, thing, they are really like. How pathetic. I mean, it's. Yeah. Sorry about that. Ow! Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, 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 right? Understand? Because the weight it, the, is going this way. And trust me, I know what I'm talking about. Really. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Story Time with me and Ben, the van life Tom Hardy for the story reading. <laughs> well, I can't. The reason I can't move up is because. Right, get them on the table. Look guys, right. this is what we've got. There you go. These are just some of the books. These are the ones that we've not even read yet. No, guys, read... Be before we start, I have read this. This has to be one of the best, best books I've ever read. It is from someone that never reads. From someone that never reads. <laughs> I, I, no, I promise you guys, The Last House on Needless Street, you have to, have to read it by Katrina Ward. Katrina Ward. Oh, Katrina Ward. It is absolutely fantastic it's that good i've bought her other three books or two books yeah. and they're at my brother's this yeah. is the one the last house and how cool is that cover so as long as i've known ben like he's never been a reader i am the bookworm as some of you know i had a travel book club that i used to run before everything got really hectic but ben really loves horror films and it's like I wonder, like, people who don't like reading, you just haven't found your genre yet. So Ben isn't going to go and read, like, rom-coms and, like, or kind sexy of books, Victorian like class 50, sexy books. Fifty Shades of Grey. Or, like, Dickens and stuff. But find, like, a good horror slash thriller. Oh, I and love And now yeah. Ben is reading so much more than, like, you probably read about nine books in the past two months. Like, I've you're read just loads. reading constantly. Guys, if you have any recommendations, fire them over we'll see if we can get hold of them before we leave uh but you US. only get more you can never have enough books yes that is true mm -hmm. i'm so mad you said that yeah, look at that. Oh, need to rearrange them so they're all in a nice order you're gonna be stopping off perfectly next no size order Having done as much to the van as we could, it was time to leave the campsite and get ready to wait for our parcels somewhere a little quieter. So, off to the desert we drove. 
again. Shade of the trees. Steal a bag of paradise lost. With dark and hearts, we didn't count the cars. Forgot all we left behind. Okay, so we have left the campsite now. That was fully booked all weekend, as was every other campsite along the coast for like 100 miles. So we have come back into the countryside, away from all the crowds. We met a really lovely guy who was actually camped next to us called David. He saw us filming outside when Ben was doing the breaks and turns out he's seen our videos. So we had a really, really good chat with him. But he lives in a van and he's a Californian born and raised. So he gave us some excellent inside knowledge of where we can come and park that isn't in like the crazy 38 degree desert heat, but it's also not on the crazy hectic coast either. So thank you so much, David. We have found this beautiful little valley and it is gorgeous here. It's like nice and not too hot, pine trees sagebrush it's absolutely gorgeous so thank you so much david and it was lovely to meet you now we're playing a waiting game the parcels still haven't arrived but there is one thing that i need to do <laughs> writing an angry letter to mercedes i'm writing i'm writing a genuine complaint letter because the more that we talked about this last night and kind of thought about it we realized that we've paid 300 dollars for them to do a thorough brake check specifically and we've got a broken one of the caliper pin boots on this wheel and on the other wheel the slide pin has seized they should really have found that out so i'm telling them that i'm not impressed with them i'm not impressed with what they're char what they were going to charge with the tie rod i was like how can you justify what should be an hour's job how can you justify fifteen hundred dollars for labor coupled with the fact that you didn't even do what i paid you for i'll never be using mercedes at dealership again and an unprofessional and subpar service for extortionate costs it's not right uh, morally it's not right oh and before anybody says anything i don't want any preaching in the comments about why did you take it to a mercedes garage you shouldn't have gone to a main dealership they're so expensive we know they're normally expensive but you'd be amazed at how, how hard it is to find an independent mechanic in the US who will look at a right-hand drive European van. When we had our brakes fully changed in Canada, how many, what, five or six mechanics? Six mechanics refused. Refused to, to even look at it. So um, yeah, we knew that Mercedes would at least look at it. We thought as well, it was just a brake check. It wasn't gonna be a massive job. Um, so we didn't expect it to be super expensive. We know that they are more expensive, um, but that's why it was just gonna be a quick brake check just to see if anything was wrong they were going to tell us if anything needed replacing and then we were probably going to do it ourselves or find someone to do it so that was why we went to mercedes but yeah it's been a bit more of a mess than we anticipated let me tell you that but yeah we, we wouldn't pro we wouldn't ordinarily go to them for any like big major work or anything like that sent Good news or the bad news? Uh, I'm only aware of two bits of good news. What's the bad news? Well, the bad news is that the parcels haven't arrived yet. Oh, that, I am aware of that, yeah. <laughs> the good news is Mercedes got back to us this morning and they have offered us a refund for the brake check. So if you're not happy with the service you've received, let them know. You might get your money back. Yeah. So that has ease things a little bit and yeah that's really good that they did that and also the company that we're doing our merchandise with because of the delays that we've had we still not received it they have also offered us a refund for our samples so they're the two <laughs> bits of good news yes and yeah. we are just hoping that they arrive within the next few days our visas run out very very soon very they? soon so at some point we're just gonna have to take the hit and just go um but we are just please keep your fingers crossed and yeah. your toes and your eyes that we get the parcels this week and that next week we can cross into mexico and start the central american leg we are so ready yeah um and we're just itching to get going now yeah. aren't we? there's nothing worse than you know just hanging around for something isn't there it's, it's, it's the worst feeling in the world i know especially when it's completely out of your control like we Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, so Scott. yeah, um, that's that. So it kind of silver lining to it all. Got some money back from all the hassle. Yeah. Let's just hope the parcels arrive, and yeah, we shall catch you guys next week. See you then. 
Hopefully Mexico. Ah. <laughs> <laughs>